With 15 years of analytics experience, I've hit the limits of many laptops. Luckily, there have been swift and massive improvements in the last 15 years in the technology and the pricing of these laptops to make them much better suited for analytics and data science than what they have been in the past. Find out what to look for when you need a laptop for data science, and I'll also recommend my top four laptops for data analysis. Hi, I'm Jen. I help people build analytics skills and careers with new videos every week. Let's start out with the requirements for a laptop and then we'll get into the recommendations. The first requirement. Any laptop for data analysis should have at least eight gigabytes of RAM, though I recommend getting at least 16 if that's something you can afford. The second criteria is GPU. Data scientists can't do their job without a strong graphics card. Always look for machines that have a newer, more advanced graphic cards, especially if you're going to be doing any machine learning. My recommendation is an NVIDIA GeForce graphics card as the baseline. They really are working with the latest technology, though if you're watching this video in a few months, something may have changed, their competitors may have caught up more. Because a good graphics card is important for data science, especially machine learning, laptops that are great for gaming also are often good for data science and data analysis because they're used to processing a fair bit of information and having graphics that are high quality and quick. When it comes to processors or CPUs, I'd suggest at least a core i7 7th generation or newer processor. These tend to be much more powerful and can easily handle some pretty large tasks. Laptops with Core i5 also have good performance, but it's not quite as good as the i7, and if you're buying a laptop that you want to last for several years, which most of us do, you're going to want to go with an i7 or even an i9. That being said, if the Core i5 is all you can afford at this point, there's really nothing wrong with it. You may just find that you either can't do some really massive computing or you, that you're much slower in being able to execute it. Storage. Storage is an important factor when you're looking for a data analytics laptop. If you're working for a company that has everything stored remotely on servers, which in many, many cases you will, then storage becomes much less important. However, if you're doing any work on your own or you're doing a lot of work locally, then storage becomes critical. Here you have some choices. You can go with an HDD or an SSD. So a HDD is more of the standard hard drive that we think of and an SSD is a solid state drive. HDDs tends to be much cheaper, but the solid state drives, though they're more expensive, tend to be better performers. I personally prefer a solid state drive. If you're going with an HDD, I would recommend one terabyte of storage space. And if you're going with an SSD, I would recommend at least 256 gigabytes. Though again, if you can spring for more, it's a great place to have more storage. When it comes to operating systems, it's all about personal preference. If you're a Mac fan and have always had their products or want to purchase their products, they're a great option. And if you prefer Windows, then that's perfectly fine too. Or many people also choose to run Linux. Regardless of which you choose, almost all the applications and programming languages that you'll be using are going to work on any of these systems. So compatibility really isn't an issue here. Just go with whatever your preference is. Screen size and portability. At this point, we're solidly into preferences territory. Usually the trade-off for a reduced size, lightness, and portability in a laptop is that you sacrifice processing power or they become much more expensive to be small. My personal preference is to have a smaller portable laptop that's easy to take with me wherever. I often work from home or a coffee shop or on a client location. So I want something that's easy to pick up and go. And for most data scientists or data analysts, you're going to find that you'll have a secondary monitor most of the time. Again, that's preference, but I personally have a secondary monitor that I use. So 
While my computer has a 13 and a half inch screen and is very portable, I also have a secondary monitor that's much larger, so I can easily work off of either one. You'll have to decide whether portability is an important factor for you and how much you care about also things like build quality, because all of these can drastically affect the price point of the laptop that you're going to end up with. If your budget doesn't allow for you to meet all of the criteria that I've outlined, the easiest one to sacrifice on is probably storage because it's really simple to add on or upgrade later. And again, if you're accessing remote servers for most of your work, you're really not going to need that much storage locally anyway. With those factors in mind, let's go through four different great options that I recommend. I'll link all of these in the description so you can go straight to them and see even more detail about each one. My first recommendation is the Dell XPS 13 or 15. I personally use an XPS 13. It's about two years old right now, and it's worked perfectly for me. Since I bought it two years ago, I actually have the Core i5 8th generation processor in it, but it hasn't been any problem. If I was buying a new laptop today, or if I buy one in the future, I would opt for at least the Core i7 because it's newer and I expect over time that the Core i5 will become a problem. The latest versions of the XPS 13 and 15 both have the Core i7 as an option, so it's really easy to get that configuration in this laptop. Where I've had issues with this laptop though is on storage. I quickly ran out of storage space just because of the way that I happen to analyze data and the fact that I do a lot more freelance work, um, which sometimes involves connecting to client servers, but sometimes involves having all of the data that I need to process on my own machine. I easily solved this though by getting a, an additional solid state drive um, that was about one terabyte or was one terabyte and that has completely eliminated any issues I had. That being said, the newer versions of the laptop also have much larger storage options. So again, if I was buying it today, I would probably buy just the new version of the same laptop and that would have all of the upgrades that I would want in it. The second option is for Mac fans. The MacBook Pro is a great option that needs little introduction. While known for their incredible quality, Apple products don't come cheap. They are known to last a long time though, and if you're a Mac fan, the MacBook Pro is a perfect option for data science and data analysis. The third laptop option for data analysis is a Huawei MateBook X Pro. This is often seen as a more budget-friendly option than a MacBook with similar build quality, though you'll find that it still doesn't exactly come cheap. These laptops carry many of the same specs as the MacBook and have beautiful graphics and fantastic construction. They also tend to have a battery life that's nine or 10 hours long. Great for those that are working remotely or on the go, where plugging in might not always be an option. For my fourth recommendation, I wanted to include a budget option. This option is one that compromises in almost every area, but if you don't have 13, 1500, even 25 or $3,000 to spend on a laptop, it's still a great starting point, though you'll likely need to upgrade sooner. And for that, my recommendation is the Acer Aspire 5. At around $650 currently, it's much less expensive than any of the other options on the list, though as I mentioned, you'll likely want to upgrade sooner, and you certainly sacrifice build quality to reach this lower price point. While it does compromise in pretty much every area, it's still a great option for getting started and one that I'd recommend if your budget is lower. I mentioned earlier that I often find myself using a secondary monitor and that this is something that's really common for people to do. I'll leave a link down below in the description and put a card right here in the video so that you can see my work from home setup for data analytics and all of the other equipment that I use in addition to my laptop. I hope you found this information helpful and the recommendations useful. Again, check out everything in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.